When the British left Burma in 1948, control of that country fell to the Burmans, the ethnic group that makes up 60 to 70 percent of the population. But now let's turn to the map, because immediately after that, conflict broke out with many other groups, one of the largest being the Karen, about three million people with their own language and alphabet by many people called a country within a country down here by the Thai border. It has been called the longest running civil war in the world, but in the past few years, the military junta that runs Myanmar has turned to increasingly brutal tactics against the Karen. CNN international correspondent Dan Rivers has visited the Karen region several times. He joins us from Islamabad, where he's covering the election in Pakistan. And in San Diego, Dustin Kinney, who got together a group of friends and decided to make a documentary on this hidden war. Dustin, exactly what is happening as the authorities there have cracked down on the Karen? Uh, well, over the past few years, when, after Britain left uh, Burma, they left it between these ethnic groups to just basically annihilate each other. So you have the Burmese, like you said, the longest, you know, the biggest population, took over the central government and told the other ethnic groups, including the Karen people, if you want your freedom, you're going to have to fight for it because we're going to kill all of you. And they've been doing that systematically over the past few decades. And the Karen are losing the war. Uh, the tactics are, are pretty astonishing. Let's take a look at these very quickly. Forced labor is very widespread. Mm -hmm. There are about 70,000 child soldiers involved in this on the, on the, uh, the entire dispute. Thousands right. of villages have been burned. Uh, rape is used as a military tactic. One and a half million refugees. Uh, Dan, one of the questions here, though, is also geographically where the Karen are. Not only do they represent a political force that the government doesn't like, but they're also clustered around a river where there's hydroelectric power to be taken, there's around forests, all sorts of things that the government wants economic access and control. Absolutely, yeah. They, they, they sit on, the, on this river that we journeyed up uh, when we visited one of the villages uh, on the border. Uh, it was pretty shocking, it must be said, when, when we visited there, uh, there was a small collection of bamboo huts uh, with, I guess, uh, about uh, a couple of thousand people living there. Uh, a lot of them in incredible uh, suffering, incredible poverty. There were a lot of people uh, there suffering uh, from malaria, malnutrition. We saw landmine victims. The uh, Myanmar army has, land, has set landmines across a lot of the territory there. Uh, a lot of people have had limbs blown off, their arms blown off. The, the simple fact is we can show you, our viewers, precisely what happened. Look at these. These are satellite images from December 2000 to December 2006. Look at this. In this one, you can see a Karin village over here. That's what these little shapes are. These are the houses. This is the same area just a few years later, and you can see that it's been simply wiped clean. The houses are gone, the people are gone, everything gone. Here's another example from just a, uh, roughly around the same time. These are Karin huts, people gathered here, homes in this area in December of 2000. December 2006, another pass, same area once again, wiped clean. There's no sign of those people still living there because of precisely what Dan was describing there. And now look at this on the Thailand side where many of these refugees go. This was a refugee camp in November of 2002. It's a little small compound here, not that big. Same camp, February 2005, three years later. Look at this. You can, hard to make them out, but hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dwellings here and roads cutting all through it. Enormous swelling of the refugees running from this place. Dustin, is there really any place for these people to run to? It seems like there's not. I mean, up until about six years ago, Thailand cut off the border to Burma. They actually said no more refugees. They, as a country, they just couldn't take any, any more of these. So now those people that are coming into these refugee camps are having to sneak over. So there isn't this, this, this comfortable place for them to come. Uh, for them to get any kind of safety, they have to escape. And I visited these refugee camps, just like you've mentioned. There are thousands of people there. There are some people that have lived in these refugee camps for their whole life. This war has been going on for almost 60 years. Some of these kids that are my age, you know, have, have never seen their home country. They've lived in these refugee camps, and there's nowhere for them to go. It, it seems like, Dan, that there is also not much international support for doing anything about this. Right now, Thailand would like to have the electrical power from the river there. China's got its own concerns. Russia's got its own concerns. Is anybody on the side of the Karen? Uh, it's simply not on the news agenda. Now it is, thankfully, because of what's going on uh, in Myanmar, the terrible crackdown on dissidents, but it's been very difficult to get any sort of focus on this issue, to get anything achieved on the ground. Dustin, does the government of Myanmar show any inclination to be concerned about this, though? Because there, even though there's some attention focus, there is no 
giant international political outcry. And even when there was an outcry over what happened in the streets of Yangon, they turned off the internet and they did what they wanted, it seems. Exactly. That's what they've done for the last 60 years. When there was a last uprising was in 1988. And at that time, there was no you know, widespread internet or, or access like that like we have now. But at that time, they just, they don't, they don't care what the international community says. They're going to continue to kill all these people, just like they promised to do almost 60 years ago. And they're not letting up. They're relentless in this, in this war. I hate to say it, Dan, but in a few years, will there even be any Corinne around? Well, there's about 120,000 of them in, in about nine different refugee camps up and down uh, the Thai uh, border. But, I mean, you're right. This is really ethnic cleansing. There's no other way to describe it. They are are being targeted because of their, their tribe, because of who they are. They are being forced out of Myanmar by uh, the army. Uh, there is a resistance group, the, um, the Karen National Liberation Army. We've filmed with them as well, but they're a pretty ragtag bunch. They've got uh, pretty poor weapons, very poor training. Uh, a lot of the soldiers are, you know, in their 50s and 60s and have been fighting for decades. They don't stand a chance against the Myanmar army, which is armed by uh, China and, and India, has the latest weapons. Uh, they've uh, covered this territory with landmines. Uh, it's a very, very uh, sad and harrowing situation. And no sign of a cavalry coming to the rescue. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you, Dan.